The next step was pursuing holiness by living holy. Right. Amen. Amen. And when I came, I didn't have no questions. Uh -huh. um, if they say give up your earrings, I gave them up. If they say take off your pants, I gave it up. I don't have a problem with the laws of God. Because right. you follow the laws, you'll be okay. Amen. You follow the laws, you'll be all right. The glory of God will be revealed in your life and he'll bless your life up the road. Amen. Amen. And I gave up everything and I did everything that I was supposed to do. Yeah. Amen. And the next one is pleasing God. I was faithful. When we was, became the church, we was there for hours. Yes. I think the time that we started was <laughs> nine to almost eight, seven at uh -huh. night. We was there for hours. Uh -huh. Amen. And but I was there faithful with my growing. I yes, appreciate yes. Uh -huh. I appreciate a witness from house deliverance coming to her and invite her. Yes. Because if she didn't come, I wouldn't be there. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes, yes. And we was there for hours and hours and amen. And I didn't leave there. Bound, I got delivered. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Pleasing God. All right. The next one is knowing that that you are sanctified. Amen. When I reached the age of 12 years old. Amen. It was a mighty wind throughout the building of house deliverance. Amen. Amen. And they were travailing. They were crying out. And again, Apostle Mary, I prayed with her a whole lot. Yes. <laughs> and she, she tarried with me. And that was the day that I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, amen. And the Holy Ghost was birthed in me. And then from that time, I knew that I was sanctified. Amen. Right. I knew that I can carry the man of God on the inside, the him that's on the inside, the greater that's on the inside with me. And I knew that I was sanctified. Yeah. Hallelujah. The next one is mo motivation. Overcoming your flaws in your life. All right. I was tempted, and it was at one point in time, I was ashamed. I mean, our signature, when we testify, we say, glory! Yeah. When we testify, everybody knew when we say glory, that we was from house of deliverance. Yeah. But I had a problem when you step out the building. <laughs> all right, all right. I couldn't say glory. And there was a sister at our church. And her name was Sister Troy. I mean, she's right. she, she gone to be with the Lord. Amen. Yeah, and I yeah, remember yeah, yeah. we were running errands, and you had we, we was in the public, and everybody was surrounding, surrounding us. Amen. And um, she was saying, glory. And she was just saying it and just saying it. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I want you to say glory. And she was just saying it over and over again. And I was like, Lord, help me. I need to get out of this. <laughs> Amen. And I finally say glory in public. Amen. And I'm going to say glory. And I'm going to say it again. Glory. And I'm going to say it again. Glory. And I realized that change was breaking over my life. To be in the house of the Lord once again, amen. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord, amen. Oh, I love living this kind of life, I tell you all. It feels good when you're living holy. Woo! Some say you gotta go out and experience drugs. Some say you gotta go drink to feel good. But I came to let you know that the anointing is what breaks every yoke. See, once you finish drinking, once you finish smoking, you go right back to your problems. Oh, but I tell you, when you get a hold of that anointing, when you get a hold of Jesus, woo! Hallelujah, Jesus. I tell you, I love living this kind of life. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. I enjoyed myself from when we came down. Did he let us in the world? I got a backup. I got some holiday. I can tell the devil, no. He don't have to pump me. Lord Jesus. People, people, you know, they
see my connection with God is nothing natural. God do not like flesh. So it's not natural, but you gotta tap into the supernatural power of God. See, let me tell you something. The supernatural power of God is when the doctor said no, God still said yes. Oh my God. The supernatural power of God is seeing someone dying but yet being raised from the dead. See, we don't have no more miracles in the church. See, that's because people are taken down. God's power has never left the church. It's the people. I'm just encouraging y'all to hold on. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's all of Satan that I lost me. I need to be free. I'm tired of the enemy bounding God's people. The devil is a liar. I need to be free. Give me some anointing. Don't give me nothing. Who Dudini said? Don't give me nothing nobody said but from God. I need to hear from God. If I don't hear from God, I'll be lost. Oh my God, I'm nothing without God. It was because of God I woke up this morning. Oh y'all, it's time for battle. The enemy is on the rampage. The enemy is on a rampage. It is time for us to man up. And stop, oh, stop letting the devil punk us. It is time for us to man up. Even, and see, even though I say man up, that goes for women and children also. Because that's where the devil is attacking. The children is the future church. See, we are the future church, and if the devil got me, if the devil got the children, where is the church? Where is the hope for the nation? See, once you got God's home, God, once you take the children out of the church, there is no hope. Because we are the nation. See, people, people don't want to listen to old people got to say no more. The children want to hear what other young folks got to say. Uh, uh, if, 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 if they hear it from us, if they, it, it sinks into their brain, if they see other young people, they the people think holiness is just for old people. You know, they're wearing the long, you know, skirts. That's for old people, you know. The men got their shirts in their pants. That's for old people, you know. Now we got swag. Now we got this. Now we got that. I look better in this. So if they don't see us, then where's the future church? Right. And then one more thing. I got to read this scripture so I get out your way. Take your time. God said, it is wrong for the church. If someone come ask you, why you wear this? It is wrong for the church say it because my church said I have to wear it. Well, why you wear a skirt? Well, my church. Why you don't wear earrings? Well, my church. Why you don't do this? Well, my church. The devil is a liar. It is not because of the church. It's because I gave my life over to God. And I can no longer partake in what the world do. See, it's going to be a separation. I'm a peculiar people. A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. I'm different. I'm not like the world. If I'm like you, then how you gonna see a difference? That's right. That's right. If I'm still drinking, how you gonna see a difference? That's right. That's right. That's right. I gotta get. Yeah, I gotta get away. They told me ten or fifteen minutes. I mean, ten. <laughs> God said we're gonna be ahead and not the tail. I may be broke, but I got Jesus. I may not have a dime in my pocket, but I got Jesus. Jesus. I may not have a house on a hill, but I got Jesus. Woo! Who can be against me? I mean, woo, if the Lord is for me, the world can be against me. I got Jesus. They think they're strong, but they can come mess with me if they want to. They think they got power. Come mess with me if you want to. Woo, you're going to get messed up. See, when you come down to God's children, you're going to get messed up playing around with God's people. Living this kind of life, living at home. 